All right, guys. Welcome back to Urge. Jameson and Alex here. Uh, we're going to be talking to you about the next class, which is the Sorcerer, and the first subclass, which is the Draconic Bloodline Sorceress Origin. Mm -hmm. That's awful yeah. right there. Because yeah, every, every class just can't have, here are the subclasses. They have to give a different name what they call it. Or an origin. origin or a domain. 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 Yeah. yeah. As the name implies, the Draconic Bloodline gives you a dragon ancestor yes. at level one. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to choose a type of dragon, uh, either from the chromatic or metallic dragons, uh, and each one has a different damage type related to it. Yep. Um, so you, you have, I'm not going to go through all of them, but the five damage types are acid, lightning, fire, poison, cold. Yes. Okay. So depending on which one you pick, uh, you're going to get later on bonuses for that. Uh, and at the first level, you can also read, speak, and write Draconic. And whenever you make a Charisma check, uh, when interacting with dragons, your proficiency bonus is doubled if it applies to the check. Also at level one, you're getting Draconic Resilience, which gives you two things, which to me are very, very helpful for a sorcerer. At every level, you will get to increase your maximum health by one, which doesn't sound like much, but you're a sorcerer. You'll have a D6 to work with, so every little bit helps. And the bigger jump is... If you're not wearing armor, which you're a sorcerer, so don't have a provision to do that unless you've multi-classed or, you know, some other shenanigans is going on there. But your AC becomes 13 plus your dex modifier. Your baseline AC is 10 plus your dex modifier if you're not wearing armor. So I said if you're a sorcerer or wizard, you're, you're paperweights. <laughs> and those made of paper in the, in the 5e. The D6 <laughs> and no armor. You're the, D, the lowest health and no armor. Um... Very much helps out your survivability, make, giving your base AC 13 plus your dex instead of 10 plus your dex. That person has just helped you out tremendously to a, uh, a glass cannon caster like a sorcerer. And then at level 6, we have the Elemental Affinity. Uh, basically, whenever you cast a spell that deals damage uh, related to the dragon type that you chose right. uh, at level 1, uh, you can add your Charisma modifier to the damage uh, one time. Right. So you can't just attack multiple times with bonus actions and doing all your crazy <laughs> sorcerer spell meta magic stuff and get the plus five if you have 20 con uh charisma but you do get that extra flat five so it makes it's gonna make your cantrips a lot better because it does say whenever you cast a spell that deals damage of that type so if you pick like fire and you're doing fire cantrips you're gonna have a base of five plus whatever the thing is if you're making those attacks so it gets it kind of like we were talking about this earlier kind of increases the floor of your damage Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, later on, five points of damage isn't really that big a deal. Uh, the other thing that's nice about this is you can spend a sorcery point when you do this and gain resistance to that type of damage for an hour. Yeah. So if you pick a more common damage type like fire, um, you have the ability to cast a, you use a sorcery point to gain resistance to fire damage for an hour, which could be pretty good depending yeah. on the situation you're in. Especially if you know you're going to be fighting something. If you're going, let's say you're going to the fire plane for whatever reason, guess what you're going to be doing? As soon as you walk through that portal, <laughs> I'd like to spend a horse point for you. <laughs> Here, this is the fire damage. Um, but the other big thing there is, I mean, to me, your your min maxer people are going to take fire almost every time just because, it's you know, the most it's the most common thing. Cold and lightning are also very common. Um, I would challenge players to take the poison or acid just to be cool because it's but the thing is about taking those there's not as many spells that benefit from it mm -hmm. but at the same time it's also especially acid it's a lot less common for that to be resisted on the back end too there's a lot more creatures that resist fire and cold and yeah, lightning that's true than they do poison and especially acid you don't get to use it as much the benefit as far as the number of spells selection to do it with but it's also usually more effective overall so there's there's definitely some, some pros and cons on there. I'd be really tempted to take uh, to go the black or the copper route and take the acid damage just because very few things resist that acid damage. That's just the way I think. I'd rather, I'd rather be you know you know be able to be more effective for long periods of time than just be the be the safe guy just take fire because mm -hmm. everything's fire and blow it up and stuff. That's just me. At level fourteen, you get the uh, probably the reason most people would take this subclass. I would say uh, cool. dragon wings. Uh, pretty straightforward. You get to fly. Uh, and the best part about it is it's just a bonus action to pop them out there. Done. There's no... You can use this once per rest, one, three times per long rest. It's done. Pop them out, boom, there they are. The only caveat is is you can't pop out the wings while you're wearing armor, but you probably shouldn't be wearing armor yeah. if you have... 
your draconic resilience, raising your AC and whatever, unless you've multi-classed. But if you've multi-classed, it specifies you can have armor made to accommodate your wings. Yeah. So if you have multi-class for you know for whatever reason and you're wanting to do that kind of thing, which is fine, it's doable. Um, to make sure you have armor custom made to accommodate the wings going popping out. Otherwise, you have risk destroying your armor, which is not be kind of, not be very fun. Yeah. But giving a caster the ability to uh, fly around and just float up in the air and avoid all the shenanigans of the barbarians and the rogues and the monks and the things going <laughs> going on down there on the For dirt. Sure. <laughs> like, you guys have fun down there. Mobility on the battlefield. Yeah. And you don't have to use a spell slot for fly, and it lasts as long as you want. There's no limit to it, nope. and you can do it as many times a day as you want. You can pop them in and out, fly around, whatever. It's all cool. No spells used. Yes. Um, and then lastly, level 18, uh, you have your Draconic Presence. So this is interesting uh, because as it lets you basically, as an action, you can spend five sorcery points, kind of a lot, considering mm -hmm. a lot of your meta magics are like one or two. Um, but essentially, it does a 60-foot aura around you, and you choose either uh, Awestruck or Frightened. So if you choose Awestruck, it is going to charm the... It says hostile creatures. Um, depending on your DM, how friendly they are. Yeah. <laughs> it might let you do it like to a crowd of people if you're trying to like do a performance or something, for whatever reason, who knows, yeah. um, as like an RP thing. Yep. Um, or Frighten them, uh, like I said. 60 foot rate, uh, 60 foot aura around you. So 60 foot radius centered on you, basically. Yes. How it sounds like it's worth it. Correct. Um, it's for one minute or until you lose concentration. So it counts as concentration. Something to keep in mind. Um, and it does cost five or three points. And if these creatures succeed a wisdom saving throw, they're immune to the effect for the next 24 hours. Right. So, uh, and also at the end of their turn, they get to retry to save it. It could be really awesome and like big encounters where there's just lots of little things. Right. Where you're just trying to like charm or frighten a ton of things just get away from me. You're trying to get through stuff or whatever. But again, five sorcery points. Is it better than twin spelling five spells? I don't know. Because you can just like... Most situations, probably not. kinds of other stuff. But, but to have the option is cool. I guess, for sure. Um, with that being said, we'll move on to the rating system yep. with the roleplay value. Uh, and with this, there's lots of potential roleplay value here uh, with the tr dragon ancestor stuff. Yep. Um, it even says like in the resilience that you, your skin, parts of your skin are covered by a thin sheen of dragon-like scales. So you have that kind of thing going on, and then you have you know your dragon ancestry and your dragon wings, and your affinity kind of has some stuff because if you pick it, whatever you pick early on, it has some impact later. So yep. we went with a four, um, just because. It, is, it does have some RP stuff here, for sure. Um, we discussed maybe doing more, but the thing is, a lot of it's very situational. Um, and again, like, Draconic Presence is up to your DM, because it says hostile creatures. It doesn't say, it doesn't say creatures of your choice, even though it probably yeah. should. Yeah, it, I think that the better wording would be creatures of your choice instead of hostile creature, because the word hostile there makes, depending on how nice or mean your DM is, they could be like, you can't use this in this sense, unless it's like a riot or something, you know, like, if you're just at a party and everyone's like happy, it's like, they're not hostile towards, you know what I mean? Like, you can get kind of in a gray area there with that. And then, uh, you know, the affinity and resilience are just kind of, I mean, if you really want to play it up, because, I mean, you can just play another class and be like, I have scars on my arm, you know what I mean? It's like, you have dragon scale. I mean, yeah. You can just make up whatever, and it's, it doesn't really add much unless you go like really deep into it but then it's really not the subclass choice it's your own choice you know what right. i mean so yeah, it's kind of iffy there so four four to rp value yeah. on the combat side get a little extra tick up with the four and a half out of five on the score uh big reason why really is the uh, draconic resilience and the wings for a, a sorcerer being able to survive <laughs> <laughs> be able to stay out there. I mean, you are you are the very much the epitome of a glass cannon in all definitions of it. Uh, no other class can cast as many spells as you can, because you can trade your sorcery points in just for extra spell slots by themselves. So no class, no class can cast more spells than you. No class can cast them as fast. You need to quicken spells so you can cast stuff as a bonus, regular spells as a bonus action, things like that. So you can file through a whole lot of spells in a hurry. Mm -hmm. faster than anybody else can so being able to stay alive because your ac is just at least three higher than it would be otherwise yeah uh and the, the maximum health is not much but it it adds up over time you know you're talking about you know by 10 let you know, just increasing your maximum health plus, plus 10 
it could get you up there with somebody who's been you know being a D eight this whole time. Yeah. If you've been rolling similarly on the dice side of things, you know, get you about where they're at, so you're not the lowest harmer and the lowest health. You're in that middle of the pack on the health side of things. Yeah. And you also get you a lot closer to their armor base as well. Um, the other thing, of course, being the flying, uh, because Huge. not only is it it's it's battle it's mobility around the battlefield, so you can avoid rough terrain. If you're getting chased down by melee, it's not just flying around the ground. You can just get up off the ground, get you out of trouble. You have like ideal vantage points on everything. Yep. So like stuff being able to like hide behind just a crowd of people, being to hide behind trees, things like that. You know other impediments on the ground and things that yeah. can block your vision you can fly around behind very quickly circle around stuff uh and gives you just the, the ability to get wherever you want to get and do what you want to do with the most ease of really of any class because of it yep uh and then lastly we have the overall class synergy uh we also went with a four for this just because uh the options are good because they give you more options for your sorcery points, like getting gain resistance to mm -hmm. whatever damage type you pick. Being able to do the draconic presence has it's an option, and it uses sorcery points, which is like your whole class is built around sorcery points. Right. Um, and then also the ability to add a little bit of extra base damage to whatever your main spells are. If like, for example, again, if you pick fire, there's lots of fire spells. You're going to be increasing your minimum damage by five, right. pretty much. How fast you get to 20 charisma is up to how you do your point by system, right. or your rolls, or whatever. Um, but it gives you a little bit of raise in the base. And then again, the dragon wings with the mobility on the battlefield, it has, you know, it's not direct synergy per se, yep. but it gives you... Like you, like Alex was saying, better vantage point in different situations and things like that. It gives you just more options and utility. Right. Um, but with that all being said, you might be saying, well, "Why is it only a four? It's because a lot of these things are very situational. Yep. Um, if they weren't quite as situational, then maybe it would be a little bit higher. Yep. Uh, but with how things are and the way that it all works out, we just had to go with four for it. Right. Because there's nothing, nothing in the subclass that really further enhances things you already do. It just gives yeah. you more options. That's something else we were looking and for. And there are very situational right. options out there. It's trying to, trying to find ways to give you, not just give you more options, but give you more options and make other options better. Yeah. The ones we've given four and a half, especially fives to, and that synergy thing, do both. Yeah. <laughs> they give you more options and make the options you already have better. Mm -hmm. I think, you, you know, that one or the other kind of things really look at that four category. But still, overall, still a very uh, a very good class that fits in. Yeah. Is, it, like I said, it, it helps a, uh, a sorcerer stay alive better. Incre increases the damage floor a little bit. It gives you a couple extra usage of your sorcery points. Overall, in an interesting subclass that can be RP'd very well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, very solid on the creative side as well. And uh, that'll wrap it up for this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let us know down in the comment section down below. Yes. Uh, let us know if you've played a sorcerer <laughs> with the Draconic Bloodline or if you played with one. Uh, any funny stories you might have or situations yes. like that or maybe even different combos of different spells and things that you can do maybe with your abilities. Love to hear all that down in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit the bell notifications so you know when our new videos come out. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.